Hello friends, welcome back to my studio, I hope you're well. A few videos ago I spoke about how to finish a painting and the very first point of that was to learn how to finish something. And it's funny about when you're giving advice out loud, often it's the advice you need to hear yourself. And I realised I've had these playing cards that I gel plated a long, long time ago now. I did a online workshop with Kelly Wynn, Deck of, Deck of Dreams, I think it was called. And I got as far as printing on the cards and not much further at all because, you know, I jump around things. I think I've mentioned I tend towards the ADHD stuff and I jump around things. And I've been wanting to make not necessarily a deck of dreams, but a deck of oracle cards. And the dream of that is to have them as sets that people could perhaps purchase for themselves. So today I thought I'd go into how to print onto playing cards with the gel plate. And luckily I left myself a little note about what colors I'd used probably knowing that uh, how good I am at leaving projects behind and trying to pick them back up later on and not knowing where I was. So I've got my colour palette. I even went as far as choosing a whole lot of papers to go on as a mixed media type thing. Of course, back when I did these, I was heavily involved in doing still lives and the teacup paintings, and now I'm refocusing back on my landscapes. So I think these are going to look quite different to what I had originally planned. But the first step is getting the rest of these cards printed. So I'll turn the camera around and show you how I print on playing cards with a gel plate. Okay, we've got a chicken laying an egg in the background by the sound of it. I hope you can still hear me well. So, oh, and I'll just move this. This is my emergency uh, chocolate stash. So jumbo playing cards is the ones I'm using. You can print on any cards at all, but I thought the jumbo pack was a nicer size. You've got a bit more room. So they're just a regular playing card. And what you'll find is I have put gesso on all of these, so I can't show you, but they are a super shiny surface. And you will find over time, the paint may delaminate, so it might come off. So you can either give them a very light sand with a sanding block like this, you can get at paint stores or hardware store, and they come in different grit, and you can just skim them over and just take that shine off or you can paint gesso over them which is what I have done. The gesso because it has uh, gypsum in it it has a rough surface and it binds to things and will also help your paint bind to it. The only thing to note is you might want to give that another light sand as well because what I've noticed is, this one's probably a good example. The Because the gesso has a roughness to it, a tooth, when I was picking up the paint from the gel plate, it was a bit more speckled. You don't get that because you haven't got quite a flat surface. If you get what I mean, if we just quickly... Get a pen. If we looked at the card under the microscope with gesso on it, the surface would look like this. And it's that tooth that allows the paint to sit in all of these gaps and be held. But it does mean when you're laying this on your gel plate, you've got this really bumpy, you know, microscopically, but you've got this bumpy surface. I quite like how it looks on a lot of them, but just know, there's another. Some are quite, quite flat, 
but some have yeah really got this speckled nature to them so just be aware of that that you can get around that by as i say just giving the gesso side another light sand with that you're only just wanting to knock off the shine or knock off the tooth it will still hold paint even with that sanded back a little bit and you can see i haven't got a huge thick lay you can still see the playing card underneath here is my gel plate of course stored i make my own gel plate so i just have a little bit of plastic sheet or acetate to help keep it protected and not gather dust because it is a sticky surface and what i like to do is put a card as a register mark because the gel plate is smaller than the can you see that so so i know when i'm rolling out the paint I know exactly where I am and this is much more becomes much more relevant of course when you're using a you might have a much bigger plate and I can then see if I put this register this under here I can see I don't need to bother about putting paint over here I'm just applying the paint to this surface the store-bought jelly plate brand of course have straight edges the homemade plate depending on what dish you're using has a beveled edge and so the other thing to be aware is it's no point putting your ooh, putting your registration all the way on this edge because your printing edge is actually slightly indented from from that so be aware of that or you'll have corners that aren't picking up it's not so necessary on this plate because it is the size pretty much of a playing card okay the colors that i used in these are here i've got a video on how to use a gel plate and how I use them. I've got a few actually, so you can go back through the catalogue. I tend to use a softer body paint for the gel plate because it just behaves better, easier to lift off, easier to roll out. So that's when I go back to the Jo Sonia paints or a flow paint rather than a structure, although I haven't got these colours in the softer body. So there is a few in the heavy body but if you can use a softer type of paint and so I've got smoked pearl raw umber yellow green warm white yellow ochre yellow mid azo midnight blue and a Payne's grey and there must be a red because I can see red. <laughs> so what have I missed? I've missed writing down one of the colors. Great. All right, I'll have to figure out what that red is. <laughs> okay, here we are. It's um, quinacridone magenta, I think, because I love this color red. And I'm pretty sure that's what I would have used. So there you go. <laughs> I wrote down most of the colors. But I got caught out. I wonder whether there's any more I didn't write down. Let's anyway, we'll see how they how they go. Let's get into actually printing. I've just laid all of the cards out so I can have a good look at them to see which stencils I use. So these are the stencils, a damask pattern. And I can't remember, I've had these so long, I can't remember where. I got them from, some are from Spotlight, some are online. Some are from Kmart. So it looks like they're all of the ones and I can see from the color as well that I definitely use these. Oh, also when I laid them out, I realized there was a pink in there and I think it's 
quite possibly this naphthol red with titanium white and I've called it blush because it's very similar to the blush undercoat gesso that uh, Matisse make. I find it really hard to talk and paint so I'll just put some music on while I have a go and try and get back into the flow of what I was actually doing with with these.
and here's the finished result of what I managed to get done today. 12 pieces. I'm really happy with them. Some I didn't film because I think you got the gist of what to do. This one, it's lovely layers in that one. So the main point is, I guess, is because it's card and very thick, it's harder to pick up the paint compared to, you know, you saw me using, this is just newsprint, picking up the ghost prints and cleaning up the plate, plate with these. And it's much easier, the thinner the paper, the easier it is to pull off the plate. So you need a little bit more paint perhaps than what you would normally use, but then you do get, I'm not sure if the camera's picking up, that's got the lines where it has got too much paint. I normally wouldn't say to use that much, but with that, I was finding it hard to get the paint to go through the stencil. So I was using quite a lot of paint in the end. I didn't get much out of these rolling off papers, except this one it was funny how it kind of looked like a phone case, <laughs> the uh, excess picking up there. That one's got some nice things going on, but this one I'm in love with. Looks like a landscape. This was just running the roller out. And yeah, I'd really love to do the new coastal series and color palette I'm doing, I would love to make it look something like this. So there we go. I was doing something that was about gel printing and printing cards and by accident, I've come up with something to bounce off from for my next canvas piece. So that's super, I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Maybe even some more gel, gel plate prints, but yeah figuring out how I could get this onto canvas would be fabulous. Great direction. So let's have a look how they marry with the ones I did months and months ago. I think they go really, really well. These are the ones that I had done during the Kelly Wynn Deck of Dreams workshop. And yeah, you can see the same colors, the same stencils, same. And I don't think, I've just left them on that page so I can see what's new. I think they marry really, really well. And the key was knowing what stencils and what colors I'd used. So now I'm going to have some fun. I've got to make these into oracle cards now and not be, try and not be so precious about them because <laughs> they're, they're pretty special. There's some lovely, lovely pieces. Some need a bit more work. You know, there's not so much in those. But this one I particularly like. Yeah, there's some lovely things, things going on in these. So I'll do another vlog at some point to show you what I do with these. Oh, I've had a lovely day in the studio today. I hope you found that very inspiring and it leaps you forward into using your gel plate and printing on playing cards. It's super easy. Just be mindful of the thickness of those cards can make it a little bit harder to pull the paint up off the plate. But really they're a cheap item, lots and lots of fun. And as I always say, don't be precious, just get amongst it, play and you'll, you know, happy accidents happen and wonderful things happen. So good luck and Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Please like and subscribe and I shall see you next week. Bye.